Oh yeah, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the fourth ever. And then the bell rang. Oh yeah, fourth show, huh? Well, the fourth WrestleMania was my greatest achievement of all time, and I hope this could be yours, guys. Over to you, Dave. Wow, I mean, the, the Macho Man is here introducing us. That's amazing. That's great, Randy. What what an honor. For you to join us on this podcast four matches in one evening oh yeah <laughs> it was quite the accomplishment four. yeah yeah he beat the million dollar man to win the title at the uh at the end like the uh, mitch and the run-in from hogan i would have done it by myself <laughs> oh well, we're not going to get into that because that's a that's a whole different storyline that takes off for a year after that with the mega powers so yeah they exploded at wrestlemania 5 that could be your next show, uh-huh. <laughs> wow, it's very nice of you to join us, Randy. Thank you very much for talking to us from the grave. I'd like to do this whole show with this voice, but I don't think my uh, throat's going to last, so I'm going to have to just talk a bit like this. <laughs> and be yeah. Oh, wow. Lord, you're back. <laughs> next, Lloyd, he's back. Excellent. Right. Wow, Randy Savage introduced us for this, our fourth episode of And Then the Bell Rang. Um, in the last episode, we talked about our Mount Rushmore. Um, we talked about wrestlers who should be on there, should, you know, how you wanted to, how you wanted to frame the argument of like, should guys who have won the titles the most be on the Mount Rushmore? Should it be, you know, guys who had everything? So I think we had a quite a balanced I mean, there were there were wrestlers that we missed tried, and tried, we tried, tried, yeah, yeah. You say tried we missed failed. some. You say right. we missed some. Now, I'm sure you're right because it would be strange if we hadn't missed some. But mm. um, are there any obvious ones, big ones that you think we really should have talked about? What, like oh. Randy Orton. Or, Randy Orton know. would have been a good one, yeah. Triple Dusty, H, would... Dusty Rose, tri- Triple H, yeah. Um, um. Oh, it's, okay. <laughs> 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 we just spoke about, but yeah. I mean, Dusty Rhodes was again. We we saw it. We knew Dusty Rhodes when he was in the WWF and doing the polka dot stuff, and then he was in yeah. WCW as a commentator. Um, Dustin Rhodes. I mean, again, he he was never world champion, but I mean, what a career he's had. He's still wrestling today. Um, the natural Dustin Rhodes. Um, oh man! How about the Mountie or the Big Boss <laughs> Man? No, look, I, I'm, I'm pretty happy that the repo we've, man. Uh, we've given it a good try. Last yeah, 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 yeah. That's a debate that will go on forever and ever and ever more, and it will never be solved. No. But I hope, hope that uh, with our advice, or, or uh, yeah, maybe we can all find some inner peace and not try and kill each other over these conversations. <laughs> Just enjoy the conversations. Appreciate, Excellent. as I say, everybody for who they were and what they did on who they are and what they're going to be yeah, just leave it there just leave it everybody just stop talking about it <laughs> i mean to be fair if they wanted to if they want to t- come at us and say well these are our mount rushmores we'd be like well that you're perfectly entitled to whoever you want on your mount rushmore so yeah, and, and no hard feelings by the way no you know no. <laughs> and it's okay to have these thoughts and it's yes. fine it's nothing yeah. to worry about um by all means Get in touch with us. Let us know who your Mount Rushmore is. Tell us why we're wrong. Yeah. And you're right. Yeah, exactly. You mean, well, I did yeah, the, set up a... The, the Springer's final thought, though, as I say, is that there is no one's right and no one's wrong. It doesn't work. No. Like. no, I did set up a Gmail account as well for us at, at and then the bell rang at gmail.com. So, you know, if you want to email us, go for it. But, I mean, we've all been there. We've never had on the on the Insanely Dangerous Retro Pod Show, Gaz is always asking for emails, and we very rarely get emails. So, you know. Anyway, anyway. that's the place. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, but, I mean, let's, let's crack on with this show, shall we? This, this, this episode is going to be about uh, WrestleMania 9, um, purely because it was your first pay-per-view. Um I remember watching it myself as well. Um, so I mean, I, I throw it over to you, Lloyd, and that's what are your what are your memories of, yeah, you know, maybe not nice ninety three, but like WrestleMania right. nine coming up at that time. Yeah, sure. Um, it's not quite my first pay per view, technically speaking. I actually, 
I video recorded SummerSlam 92 for my brother who wanted oh. to watch it but wasn't around. So while I recorded it, I wasn't really engaged with it and I deeply resented it. I, I didn't want to waste my day right. anything, watching wrestling at the time I, I wasn't hooked on it yet no. um, my, my brother's got there about a year or two before i did um but wrestlemania 9 is different because i did watch that i literally and it by complete chance i um i, I want to say it was around about easter time of 93 hmm. um so two week easter holidays in the uk I came downstairs quite late in the evening and my brother was in the front room and all yeah, all the lights were on and the lamps were on and, um, you know, things were in full swing. And um, I said, oh, what are you watching? And I said, well, I'm just, I'm just, just watching a movie, but uh, I'm just killing some time. We're going to watch WrestleMania 9. I'm like, WrestleMania 9, what's that? He's like, oh, <laughs> uh, WWF. I'm like, oh, okay, okay. Um, he's like, oh, you hang about and watch it with me if you want. I'm like, oh, okay, fine. <laughs> um, and that's really how that started. But um, yeah, as I said, all I knew about wrestling at that time really was who Hulk Hogan was. I knew yeah. that he was big. Um, and I was vaguely aware because my brothers were into it. You couldn't be in the same house and not be at least peripherally aware of some of the wrestlers or at least some of what was going on on a uh, basic level yeah. um so I, I can remember boss man and nails for example um, <laughs> oh, God, no. um, although I, I was only sort of hearing the the, you know, the the edge of all that but yeah, yeah um yeah i watched it and um it was quite a strange one for your first show really because uh, yeah. just in terms of the set dressing of it and the context obviously it's in las vegas um you know, it's it's the Roman toga party. Um, yes. Great look. Um, you know, the centurions with their tunics and and lances and uh, interesting um, introduction by Savage coming in on. I think it was a, on an <laughs> elephant he was riding, wasn't it? Was that Bobby Heenan? But yeah. Um, so Savage came up. Savage came and being carried him. Yeah, they were, he, Savage was being carried. I think that was supposed to be set up for Bobby Heenan. But no, Savage right. obviously nicked it, and then Heenan came in backwards on an elephant. <laughs> yeah, that's right, and he's, he's and he does a great job of falling over himself and like, yes. exposing his underpants yeah. and uh, just making a general ass of himself. And he's complaining like he, you know, that was like riding on a camel and yeah, he was set up and yeah, it's just it's a quite hilarious introduction. And yeah. Jim Ross wearing his toga and um, yeah, everybody having fun. What I didn't know about until actually quite recently is exactly where that venue is because all the promos um, sort of gave you the sense that it was right in the heart of Las Vegas it was Caesar's Palace it was yeah right in the thick of the action but actually in, in reality it was pretty much a car park um, <laughs> yeah. anywhere but the strip yeah uh, if you want to google this just punch in Wrestlemania 9 venue on Google and it'll come up and it'll show you exactly where it was and it was an incredible piece of set dressing yeah um, you know, what laid behind those um, stands was basically highway yeah um, and warehouses and there's a couple of tennis courts I want to say as well on one side and you think wow that was quite something but you never got any glimpse of that at all in the show it was um, incongruous, I think is the word I would use to describe that whole setup. It was, didn't yeah, quite it was a lot, did it? It was a strange. strange one. Yeah, very strange. So yeah, it, um, that's how I stumbled onto watching the show, and I, I watched it until I guess it would have been on about midnight. Yeah, on Sky Sports in the UK, and back in the good old days in the nineties when you just paid your Sky Sports subscription and you can watch whatever sports was on, which was football, which was wrestling, which was tennis, which was anything and everything. Yeah. You didn't have to pay for basically pay for the pay for yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, I would have bit, bitterly resented that back in the day. Um, yeah, I think I want to say this was the first live show that Sky did. Uh, because I think Other most... than SummerSlam 92. Yeah. 
Yeah, because yeah. I remember watching WrestleMania 8 on a delayed feed, which was, wasn't great, but WrestleMania 9 was the first live one they did, I think. So from the U from the US anyway. So but um yeah. Yeah. That's how I stumbled onto it. And um I think really I guess we're just gonna do this match by match and talk about the matches. Play. And, yeah, yeah, play by play. Uh yeah, a little bit. So obviously I was I didn't really know that much about wrestling at this point. So I've got my I've got my brother there yeah basically educating me the whole time um, <laughs> and explaining certain things at certain times and um, uh, there's a couple of spots in particular that I can still remember yeah. from him reacting to and stuff. So so I knew as I say, I knew who Hulk Hogan was and I was aware that or, or quickly became aware that he was gonna be in this tag match and they they show a little bit of the build up. Yeah, and um, yeah, I thought it was great. I couldn't wait to see Hulk Hogan come out. He wasn't on right. first. Um, I remember I was really excited to see that. <laughs> I thought yes, this is great. I'm glad I'm watching this. This is fun because I suppose yeah, you know, Hogan had retired supposedly at WrestleMania eight. So yeah. he he's really his best is before my time, Hogan. Mm -hmm. But obviously I became a student of wrestling and you know, the history of wrestling. Um, certainly 70s and 80s and 90s in particular and uh, yeah, I was hyper aware of who he was and I was you know, really looking forward to it um but if we jump in I guess we'll just jump into the first first match yeah shall we and um yeah you've got Shawn Michaels versus Tatanka yes yeah for the, for the intercontinental title yes um, Sean Mike was defending. Um, it's an okay match. It's an okay match. It's not brilliantly done. I, I think, yeah, as open as go, it didn't stink, but it, it wasn't that great either. It had a disappointing finish. Um, I mean, Sean Michael was just the classic heel intercontinental champion where you know that that classic heel um, has to rely on cheating and good fortune or just cowardice to yeah. obtain it well, and you know he's never going to take anybody on toe to toe man to man because that's just not what heels do no they're most of the time they find themselves in a position where they should get beat and they get saved by hook, <laughs> hook or hook and, yeah he does that brilliantly in this match um just try to remember though wasn't it a disqualification there was a there was a count out. So they had they had um, Sh Sherry came out with Tatanka, um, and yes. Luda Vashan came out with Shawn oh, Michaels. So she's yeah. pissed at uh, being you know, dumped by Shawn. Assaulted. Yeah, she's yeah, yeah. Of, yeah, dumped in the the mirror, um, being the rammed in the mirror. Yeah. Gennetti, and you know, really, that's I mean that's a good one. That that's a match that took so long to happen. A lot of the heat was lost, I think that's fair to say, you know, when they did finally get it on. Um, yeah, I think Gennetti, that was... Gennetti had been fired three or four times at this point. <laughs> yeah, I right. think this was originally supposed to be Gennetti versus Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania, but I think because Gennetti Should've was, been. yeah, I think because he was fired again, because he was caught with drugs. I think he was arrested or something, and I think WWE let him go, or I, they just let him deal with his legal stuff on his own or something. They, they put Tatanka in his place, but um, I mean, Tatanka I mean, I, was was still relatively newish. I mean, he was yeah. probably less than a year. And he was still undefeated at this point, and yeah. he was a hell of a, uh, a face. He was he was quite popular. I thought he was a good worker as well. So. Absolutely. Um, when he was a, when he was a face, I think when he turned, yeah, oh, he uh, was terrible. He was a heel. <laughs> I don't know why. Just he was just lousy when he turned. <laughs> yeah, heel. just didn't didn't work. No, it, it's it actually hurt him. I think he when he was face, I, th I think he was always in that conversation of is is he actually going to maybe win a win a belt yeah. here, um, particularly around that time. So being put in the IC um, picture in a WrestleMania nine was quite a big deal. Yeah. Um, yeah. But being that they put the match on first, deep down, knowing what I know now, I'm thinking. Yeah, they're not, not going to change hands. The matches first, then they're, they're not going to change it. No, no I mean Tatonka. I, I think can't imagine that ever happened. No, I think Tatonka would have made a decent Intercontinental Champion. 
Um, yeah, I, I agree. Actually. I kind of think from a, I, I kind of I remember having I think there was a Bruce Pritchard uh, podcast on Tatanka and you know Conrad asked him you know Tatanka really would have made a good intercontinental champion and Bruce was kind of like not dismissive but he was like mm, eh. uh, much like the Piper thing he's like oh, he didn't really need a title I was like oh Bruce come on. That's awesome. Yeah, so, this is where I talk about politics and the bullshit, and just like, yeah. come, just, oh, yeah, but, yeah. I mean, again, it wasn't a bad opener, but I think they focused a bit more on Sherry and Luna. I mean, Sherry got attacked by Luna, and she ran away, and Sherry had to be helped to the back, and they did a backstage scene with Luna where she gets attacked, or Luna attacks yeah, Sherry in the did, backstage. They didn't show it live; they just no. made it happen on commentary. But there yeah. is footage of it. It's on. I would policy at home it's, video. If it wasn't on YouTube. <laughs> I'd be amazed. Um, and it's it's quite um, it's actually quite unpleasant to watch because Lou <laughs> does a great job of being heinous and yes. evil, wicked. And um, you know, Sherry was was all of those things for years. But now all of a sudden, um, we've got some sympathy for her. And she's getting all beat up, and you know, it's the yeah. cat fight, the hair, the hair pulling, and yeah, unfortunately, um, a lot of that probably overshadowed the match itself which i thought was largely forgettable if I'm yeah honest. yeah i mean look, let's face it this is a wrestlemania that's regularly um put in conversations about is this the, the worst wrestlemania of all time and nine is if it's not one it's two in most two people. for me 11 is the worst for me 11 is just <laughs> awful uh yeah okay, maybe have that discussion another time <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but I, I'd agree. They, those are the two that that's pretty. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. Oh God, no. That was such a depressing thought. <laughs> WrestleMania 11. Well, we can Talk move on. We can move on to the. Of course, tag there's title some match. big stuff here. There's yeah, some yeah. Here. This is a good um, match. The I, I, I have to say, um, I can look back on this now, and I appreciate WrestleMania 9 a lot because I think it was, it was something different. Um, the company wasn't doing very well in general. Right. Text, you know, they'd lost, they'd lost Hogan a year earlier, and a lot steroid of, trial, steroid yeah. trial. That's right, and um, a lot of talent had been moved on. Yeah, so it was a new roster largely at this point. Um, there were a few old timers still around, but yeah, uh, it wasn't it wasn't a great place at the time. They weren't in a strong position at all. I Wrestling think as a whole was pretty bad in '93, though. Even in WCW, it wasn't great. I mean, yeah, I, we, we got... wondered about this though because you you hear you hear people talk about this that do other podcasts that were theirs, and you, you mentioned Bruce Pitch, Richard, he's one. Yeah, uh, and they talk about how bad things were at the time. As a fan, I don't remember that at all. I don't have I don't no, have any no, no. sense of you know the whole steroid thing. I think maybe. Partly because we're in the UK, we have had as great Big coverage to their media, no. but um, it's not something. I mean, there's always stuff said about wrestling. And, you know, it's this, yeah. And that. Not just that it's fake, but you know, there, there, there was always, you know, there was always some headlines about it in the mainstream. I, I talked about, um, I think I might have talked about Richard Keys not too terribly long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, interview he had with Hulk Hogan famously in the in the eighties in, in Britain and he just behaved like a complete arse and you know tried to embarrass Hogan and just basically point out said to him in his own way that, you know, is it legitimate? Is this is yeah. this legitimate sport? And you know, just trying to discredit. And Hogan handled it brilliantly. But um I never had that sense of cultural poverty that we're led to believe was was going on at the time no uh, wrestling because i i, I yeah you know, to me it was all new and actually quite, quite oh, yeah, yeah. and fun a lot of fun and yeah. you're still being led by the personalities of the wrestling involved in the storyline yeah uh, so you can say that at this point they probably weren't they weren't using the larger arenas anymore for the week-to-week shows and that's a sure sign that actually it's not quite where it was. I, I do get that. Yeah. Um, but in terms of the sort of general positivity of all the broadcasters and the, and the storylines, you know, they, they were just getting on with it and yeah. doing, doing what they were doing, you know, and enjoying it. Oh, yeah. So, 
so I, I never had that sense at all that it was you know a business in decline I mean we're being led to believe here this is Las Vegas and you know yeah. it's about all the, the big boxing matches that are promoted around Vegas over the years decades um, and yeah. now WWF is there they're at WrestleMania night Caesars Palace and you know this is big this is showbiz yeah. so you know they, they were pushing that pretty hard oh yeah 100 awesome. percent yeah, and again, even when you watch like Raw when it first debuted in '93, like the crowd and the audience, it was it was a smaller arena, but the, the audience and the crowd made it feel special. I thought back then, yeah, more boisterous and hostile yeah. in a way. Yeah. It's a New York crowd, and, yeah, New yeah. York special, and yeah, and all that. Um, and yeah, I'm sh- yeah it's really um, so. Yeah, there we are. That's. <laughs> That's the opening of it, and those those are some of my thoughts about that's fair enough. Uh, what that what that appeared to me to be like, you know, it was it was interesting. I, I think when I look back on it, maybe some of the Roman theme, maybe that was <laughs> that wasn't the best. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's never been done since, as far, at least as far no. as I, you know. You may correct me if I'm wrong. I'm possibly out, but. Um, They've never dared do it again. <laughs> um, it's the sort of thing, you know, that whole Roman toga thing. It sort of reminds me. Do you remember the Varsity? Um, yeah. <laughs> yes. In WCW, like yeah. there's all the American college guys with the jackets, and yeah. Yeah. It's the kind of thing I'd imagine. You can almost imagine like the Varsity turning up to WrestleMania Nine drunk, and throwing up, coming down the aisle. It, it just had. It, it was. It was fitting of that, wasn't it? It, it was. Well, that <laughs> i like i like that because i like you use the varsity because technically one of the varsity members is actually in the next match rick oh, steiner so I, yeah well, he wasn't the only one, wasn't the only one wasn't that's it? true irs is uh, here as well yes, <laughs> yes, yes that's another bit of fun this another. was actually a good match though the steiner brothers versus the head shrinkers hard hitting yeah yeah um the steiner brothers i love the steiner actually. brothers unbelievable yeah. tag team and yeah i can't remember them having too many stinker matches some of the some of the most epic tag matches i've ever seen involved them yeah um, again they're, they're right up there in the conversation as well um you know you can have a mount rushmore of great tag teams all the time well yeah. not to put them on it i would say but yeah um yeah another great match and i think that the head shrinkers um are one of my favorite teams oh actually as okay. well because not so much in 93 no. in in 94 when they won the tag titles i thought that did actually elevate them they were i thought they were pretty badass yeah a little while and um, the head shrinkers i really like them and um, when i properly got into it in 94 um sort of tipping my hat a little bit so yes wrestlemania 9 is my first show yeah but wrestlemania 9 ultimately wasn't quite enough to hook me on wrestling to get me watching it, it came a little later yeah a little later uh, but n- nevertheless it's still a strong memory but yeah another great um another great contest i don't know that this was a particular classic no, um, no. match i don't think it was bad um but again it's it was it was worthy of being on the card and i think um anything you can do at that time to elevate the steiners would have been worth doing so yeah, definitely worth having the match at WrestleMania 9. And Scott Steiner had one of the best finishes ever with the Frankensteiner. Yeah. <laughs> also Which, one of the uh, scary. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, scary as well. But they also did the Steiner lines as well and the Bulldog um, from the top rope. But I think these guys, because I didn't know at the time, but obviously the head drinkers were in Frank, WCW. Frankie, Frankie Steiner, Frankenstein. Frankensteiner, Frankensteiner, yeah. Frankenstein. Did they call them the Steiner line? Steiner line, yeah, yeah. Did they still actually call that on commentary? Yeah, 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 yeah. That was again. This was like you know because they were WCW guys. Um, are you sure? Are you sure if that happened that Jim Ross wouldn't have been getting a bollock in his ear by Vince McMahon saying, "God damn it, pal! No. We don't use WCW language here. We're, you're in the big leagues now. You can't handle that asshole. Then you you can leave town." <laughs> To be fair, I think um, I think I think um, guys who came over from WCW in this time, I mean, like Ric Flair had been over, and they they still he still used his same move set. 
Um, the Steiner brothers still use their same move set from WCW. Um, so I think I think they were allowed to just carry on calling them the, the same names as they did in WCW. Um, I mean, the head shrink is I didn't realize it until I'd seen some of the. Uh, I think I remember watching like some of the old WCW videos and like um, seeing a Samoan SWAT team on there. And I was like, hang on a minute, that's that's Fatu and that's Samu. What are they doing on WCW? So I didn't realize, obviously, at the time that they, because these guys, the Steiners and the head shrinkers had wrestled in WCW a few times. So they had some barn burners already in the in that organization. So um, it was pretty cool to see them both on a WrestleMania match. Yeah, if I just say real quickly, um, we mentioned a little bit last week about um, which was the which was the best title to have the WCW World Title or WWF Championship. Yeah, was then. Now, what, what I probably should have mentioned it last time and didn't, but um, I think most wrestlers would argue that the talent is generally fairly interchangeable. And you just touched on it then. Yeah, everybody works here, there, and everywhere. Yeah. Um, so in terms of prestige, it's more about the promotion and how credible the promotion is and how successful the promotion is. I think that lends weight to the title. But in terms of the talent, I don't think you can argue that, um, you know, it, it's, I think it is fairly interchangeable. Um, it will come down to more about you know, how experienced the wrestler is. Yeah. Um, not necessarily what promotion they're from. Or, you know, no, no, no. Okay. They've been, if they've been given the, the chance to perform, so I think this was a great thing. You know, it's it a bit of a coup, really, when you think about it, with everything going on. Yeah. Um, at this time, Vince McMahon brings over the Steiners from WCW to WWF, and I think actually he did a fairly good conversion of them, tried to translate them into WWF um, sort of you know icon faces. I think yeah. he did actually. You know, for the most part, I think he was pretty successful. It all sort of fizzled out for him. Um, it did about a year or so after this, which was a shame. Um, I think they were a loss actually when they did go back to WCW. I think um, there was still a lot more in them, and uh, it's a bit of a shame. I, you know, I think I think probably money came into it to a large extent at that time. But um, yeah, what did you think of the finish of this match? I mean, I, like you said, this Frankensteiner was a very scary move to take anyway. And I, I thought it was pretty, I think it was a highlight of the of the match itself. Um, just like, yeah, yeah. You think yeah, it, it put him over? Put him over yeah, probably. I think so, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think Jim Ross saying the Frankensteiner and you got Randy Savage back in it, but Frankensteiner, yeah. It's like, <laughs> okay. it, was, it was good commentary as well. I mean, again, because Jim Ross had called many Steiner brother matches. Um, I think he probably mentioned it on commentary as well. <laughs> he knows these guys really well. It's like, yes, we get it, Jim. You're because fr- I mean, at the time, I, I, I th- again, Jim Ross was a WCW guy, and, he, and I'd seen videos of him in WCW. So like, it was quite a, a shock to see him on WrestleMania because you're like, oh, hang on a minute, you're a WCW guy. What are you doing in the WWF? Um, but I mean, I, I think, uh, I think the move added to the, to the match. Uh, it was pretty hard hitting. It needed itself. a good finish. Yeah, it needed a good and finish. And it got it. So, because um, it had a letdown in the first match. Yes. Um, yeah. Forgivable, but it was yeah, a bit of a letdown. So Absolutely. You want to get the show off to a good start, and you have a bullshit finish like that, and and, and a disappointment as well, because you really want Tonka to win the belt, and he doesn't. So yeah. yeah, it was nice to have a little bit of a lift. Um, I think this would have been about, a better you, opening match, to be fair. Yeah, pro- probably would. Probably would actually. Um, no. Good call. Um, one thing about good old JR, who yeah. most of us love, um, yeah. <laughs> he he probably doesn't get called out on this too much. And, I, and I'm not going to give him a hard time because he can't give JR too much of a hard time. He's 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 a legend. Yeah, um, he, he was prone, particularly around this time, a little bit for. Um, praising wrestlers that had college and athletic <laughs> uh, scholarship backgrounds, and yeah, know, he'd be like, he'd be like, oh, oh, the Steiners, you know, like, oh God, 
they came from the University of Diddly Doodly and they had athletic <laughs> scholarships. And the, um, yeah. Uh, yeah that I, was I know, I know what he was trying to do. He was trying to legitimize it and yeah. um, he was trying to add credibility and, yes. and build people up. I mean, he had nothing but the best intentions, but I, I must admit, I, I used to find it a, annoying. Uh, yeah, a little bit, but it more that it was just not necessary and yeah. for want of a better term no one really gave a fuck no. <laughs> uh, did, did you have that same feeling I mean he did it occasionally I mean in, in, in and the even WC... Bobby Heenan once or twice I can remember him talking about um, that and commenting on it like oh God, you did you know where everybody went to school? <laughs> yes, yeah. Like yeah. And yeah, that that's an outward sign of <laughs> you need to shut the fuck up. Yeah. That. Yeah. Um, I mean, but, yeah, God, God loved JR. I think he did it a lot in WCW. Um, and I think it was just something he always did and no, no one ever challenged him. Yeah. yeah. This is his first show. Yeah. He's probably nervous as shit and he's wearing a toga. He probably feels stupid. Um, <laughs> And yeah, yeah, I, I think yeah, he had that thing about oh the southern draw. Yeah, <laughs> yes, but oh, yeah, no, I, I get what you're saying. Vince not like southerners. That's, that's pretty that's pretty racial. Yeah, <laughs> really, Vince McMahon. I Did think Tony Schiavone, Schiavone mentioned Schiavone's that. One. Yeah. yeah, so. But I mean, Jim Ross lasted a little bit longer than Tony did in the WWF. <laughs> well, um, there, well, there'll be plenty of time to talk about. Tony yeah, Sony and other other um, other things. So. Yeah. Well, we'll move on to the next match then, shall we? With Doink and Crush, which yeah. Right. <laughs> so um, this this one I can remember seeing. I think they showed some replays of basically the assault on Crush when he got knocked out. Yeah. Um, and again, bear in mind, I know more or less nothing. About yeah. well, this is another one where uh, my brother was explaining some of the background and how this was like a real this is real personal this was a big deal to grudge match and, and they showed I really liked it um, and it give credit to Jerry Lawler and I think Vince McMahon actually who did the commentary on Superstars, Superstars. yeah so yeah he gets um, there's a crush is walking away from Doink after he's been squirted in the face with water and he's just like oh to hell with this he walks away and then he pulls out Doink pulls out his own um cart. Arm. yeah yeah whatever it was and the you know, kayfabe knocks him out and Vince McMahon's like oh this isn't supposed to happen and this he took his own arm off it's like oh my Jer- god Jerry Lawler's like oh no 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 this is no laughing matter and yeah <laughs> and yeah they're, they're treating it quite serious and it is it's so funny when I look back because I'm kind of buying into a fair bit of it yeah I, I can remember that. As um, did I, yeah, yeah. That was quite funny when I looked back. Yeah. But that was what was great about wrestling then is that um, we didn't know about the box of tricks, tricks. that they yeah. had. Uh, yeah. all, of, all of these little techniques and, yeah, all these spots that we didn't know how a lot of it was done. Um, and, yeah, my biggest problem with wrestling now is that I know far too much. That's why yeah. I can really, I can never really watch um, wrestling now and not yeah. basically critique it and analyze it in terms of uh, how good is this guy's mic skills or is this is this a good story they're telling in the ring and I just I look at it completely differently now to when I did then as a kid um, yeah. because we were all a lot more innocent and you know, we took it as soap opera I suppose and yeah. treated it as such I suppose, yeah we did I suppose and it is a compliment. I think we didn't take it that seriously no. uh, compared to now where everything's sort of micro analyzed and critiqued and it's difficult because we all, well, we all know so much about how it all runs and works now. But um, yeah, this is a match again. I, I was, I was quite interested in, and it's quite, it's quite a fun match. You think, it's all going to go Crush's way. He gets him in his finisher. Yeah. Middle of the ring eventually. We'll just skip to the end, I think. Yeah. yeah. 
because it's a decent match. The referee's been knocked out, by the way. Yeah, yeah. there's a a classic ref bump. And yeah, Yeah. Doink's done quite a good job of dodging Crush throughout most of this match and frustrated with being quicker than him. And he's not been able to quite corner him and smash the shit out of him. (laughs) Yeah, given the payback that he deserves. And we all want this evil clown to get his face smashed in. And yeah, and yeah, great, great gimmick. Uh, doink, yeah, the evil clown. Yeah, um, by um, the original was Matt Bourne. Matt Bourne, yeah. that's right. Um, and a hell of a wrestler as well, actually. Technical skills were very high. Yeah, um, great worker, but great psychology as well. He was a he was a nasty little fucking heel, and he, he was, was great. He, yeah. That's the best compliment I can give him. He was a nasty little fucker. <laughs> <laughs> he was great. Um, so anyway, Crush eventually gets him in his, his head crushing, you know, the, the coconut crusher, whatever he yeah. called it. Um, yeah. Again, for want of a better term, I can't actually remember what he called his finisher. Um, so he's got him in the ring and you're thinking, wow, he's going to crack his crack his head and he's going to beat him. And the, well, as soon as the ref wakes up, it'll all be over. And then out of nowhere, a second doink um, clown just hits the ring. And blindsides Crush again with the same thing. The the, the arm knocks yeah. him down, knocks him out. Cover, pin. It's over. Crush has lost. He's been humiliated again. Yeah. And you think, wow, <laughs> things aren't going his way. <laughs> no, Crush. Um, so it's been a couple of disappointments on the card already. Um, yeah. I'd say this is probably one of the bigger ones. Yes. Um, as a fan. I was a big but again, fan it was, as well. It, it was fun. It was yeah, fun. Yeah. yeah, they they get the two doinks in the ring at, at the end and they're they're doing the kind of mirror the mirror movements in yeah, front of each stuff. other. And yeah. Sort of, yeah. And um, yeah. Bobby Heenan's there go, what happened? It was an illusion. It was an illusion. <laughs> it's like there were two doinks. And it's like, no, 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 there was only one. So Dab is just like, what the hell happened? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Savage's reaction were probably the best part of this show, to be fair. So, yeah, that was that was a good one. That was a good one. What was the next yeah. match? It was it was Razor Ramon and Bob Backlund, oh, which, yeah, sure. which <laughs> I don't know why they thought that Razor should have Bob Backlund in the match, but hey, <laughs> it wasn't a very long match either, was it? So. No, I want to say it's only about three minutes. Yeah, barely. Um, it's a shame this because Bob Backlund's only come back to WWF late ninety two, I want to say. Yeah. But was it and was it just me when he came back like nobody cared? Like the, the audience were like, had had he come back like now, people would be like, Oh my god, I remember Bob Backlund back in the day, but they'd been a well, bit think, more excited. But back then case, you can make a genuine case for the fans at that time being yeah. you know, quite young yeah. kids and they'd never heard of him. Yeah, they just wanted the gimmicks Nothing that were being sold to him. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I know lots about him now, yeah. um, and you know, within a year we'd know a bit more about him as well, which was yeah. a great thing. And him heel. Let's get another story for another day. But um, yeah, this is this is a, a guy that um, had no entrance music, <laughs> um, fairly bland um, sort of look, I suppose, in terms of you know his, his gear. Yeah. Um, if anything, he looked like a jobber. He did. Bob Backlund. When you think about it, actually, yeah. you, can, you can make that case. He looked like a jobber. And when yeah. he has a three-minute match at WrestleMania 9, with Razor Ramona, this is my first introduction to wrestling, I'm thinking, well, he was pretty shit. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> <it's, it's basically, laughs> like, and I think that they, they must have mentioned in the commentary about him being the world champion for... I think so. Uh, like five, six years, whatever it was now. Yeah. Um, form, definitely mentioned he was former champion anyway. Yeah. Um, but you'd be thinking, wow, must have been 150 years ago. Because, <laughs> Jesus. I mean, Ray, Razor comes in there and it's, it felt like a jobber match. It did, yeah. Actually, that's yeah. one thing to say about it is for that stage at that level, I don't think that's good enough, actually. I think with the it's skills strange that match had, to on. it should have been, I don't know whether the scheduling was an issue, don't know, but I mean, it was still reasonably early in the show. 
yeah. to make a match like that only a few minutes with the caliber of someone like Bob Backlund and someone like Ray Ramon who would who was emerging at this time. But um it was it was a bit wasteful, I think. And I think it's it's a disappointment when you think about it, because if if they'd had that same match a year later, um, you know that it would have been a much better match because of obviously Bob Backlund turning heel. In fact they do have matches late yeah. ninety four. Uh, those two, and they go a lot longer than three minutes. Um, and he beat him with so a wrestling hold, like, which probably yes. takes great pleasure in saying, hey, he beat him with a wrestling hold. I love it. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> oh I don't know what they were trying to. I don't know what they were trying to do it, for this. Cornet was wrong. Cornet was wrong about that. That yeah. big rant he had in '97. Really. Exactly. He, he needed to add that extra move from Razor from WrestleMania yes. with the roll up. Yeah. It was a roll up. It from, was. Yeah. Small it? package. It was, one, two, three. Yeah, small package. Exactly. Oh dear. Yeah, I, I don't know what you can really say about nothing. One. Nothing. I mean, I felt sorry what? for Razor. But it's well, no, I didn't feel sorry for Razor because obviously he he was put over pretty strong. Actually, True, I mean, in that in that sense, it's yeah. good for Razor because it makes him look awesome. And yeah, you know, he was rightly on that upward trajectory. Um, although he has a big bump with the with the kid not long after this, but anyway, yeah. Um, so good, good for Razor. Does nothing for Backland, and I, I think it was wasteful. I think it should it should have and could have been a much better match than it was. Yeah. Um, three minutes was a little bit of an insult to yeah. the to the event itself. I think the pay per view and the level of that pay per view. I think it's a disappointment. Not good yeah. enough. But there you go. That's that's my yeah. that's my take. Um, well, let's move on to the match. The match that was. Because it wasn't like a double main event, was it? But it was like they were billing it as a main event match, the tag match between Money yeah. Inc. and the Mega Maniacs. Yeah, um, I mean, I can only really talk about this uh, in terms of what I thought of it at the time. Yeah, uh, which yeah, I thought it was, I thought it was brilliant. It was really exciting. Um, it had all sorts of shenanigans and cheating and <laughs> oh great i loved it at the time i thought it was so much fun and seeing hulk hogan there all, all battered and beat with the black eye and stitches after he'd had a so-called kayfabe um incident in the gym yeah <laughs> um as irs said before the match and uh yeah money inc you're know, thinking oh wow this is like um oh, yeah. the, the you yeah, know the two most corrupt Wrestlers, you can imagine. I thought this, it was great. It was, do you know what? It was just so much fun when I watched that match. The build up um, was good as well. With I really wanted Beefcake. Hulk Hogan and Beefcake to win. I really wanted it yeah, to win. And, and yeah. what, I also really liked the drama as well because they showed obviously Beefcake, the context of all this is Beefcake um, gets all beat up by Money Inc. Yeah. And Jimmy Hart's the manager, and even he's thinking, no, oh, no, this is what? It's too this much. Is, yeah. Which, yeah. This is wrong. Yeah, um, and he inter- he tries to interfere, and uh, yeah, he's a heel manager. And, like even he's got a conscience, and yeah, you know, they throw throw him out of the ring, and then they nail Beefcake with a briefcase, and you know, he's um, it's basically had reconstructive surgery on his nose, and he's out of action. And Hulk Hogan's in retirement, and that's his best friend, and he, you know, he heard what he didn't want to hear, and he, he couldn't he couldn't bear it. He was watching it on Raw, and uh, oh, it stirred him up, and he's now he's now he's back and he's yeah. back brother <laughs> and um, yeah. it's just a lot of enthusiasm and Jimmy Hart's now going to manage Hogan and Beefcake and you know I thought yeah. oh, really like Hart that's a Came good a guy face for the first time in his career yeah, that's right because he's always a, he was always an obnoxious little but snob that little pipsqueak as Gorilla Monsoon right. would always call him get that yeah. little runt out of here <laughs> okay, but he had a different on. look as well so he did you know, yeah, yeah the other thing so yeah. they, they've got great jackets. Oh, yeah. And, um, yeah, you know, the yellow and red. And, it, yeah, they were the mega maniacs. It was pretty awesome. I, th- I thought it was great. Love Jimmy Hart. Love Beefcake and Hogan. I really wanted them to. Yeah. And, um, yeah, the match was just a just a pantomime and a fiasco. And it was just, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was great. Um, I, I do remember, as I say, my, so my brother's there just occasionally throwing in a few little tidbits of information for me explaining things yeah um there's a bit where they basically try and walk out on the match yeah. money inc they're, they're literally they're walking down the aisle they're almost out the back and then um howard finkel 
announces that the referee said that basically if, if Money Inc. don't get back in the ring on the count of 10, um, they'll forfeit the also they forfeit the titles. They'll, they'll lose well, not only the match, match, but they'll lose their titles, yeah. Yeah, yeah. which is not Never how it Never been done worked. before, no. no. Uh, and my brother's, like, he's, he's reacting to that knowing what, you know, with more experience than me. Like, yeah. <laughs> wow, he, he's like, literally goes, you know, and it's so obvious, he's like, oh, you wait, they'll start running in a minute. Yeah. They'll wait right till the end, and, and sure enough, they do, and it's just, it's just so much fun. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, eventually, you know, ref bumps and mess and DQ, um, yeah, yeah, it ends up in a DQ to to Money Inc. and and um, you're thinking, oh, this is a bit of a letdown, but um, they they finish strong and um, I do like it. Jimmy Hart of all people is the guy that, that hurls the referee clean across the ring yeah. and then throws him out of the <laughs> ring. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're thinking Hogan's going to do it. And he yeah. doesn't. He yeah. just lets Jimmy Hart, probably one of the smallest guys in wrestling, <laughs> um, let him be the bully for once. And it's actually hilarious. And then they hit the music of the yeah. Hulk Hogan, and yeah, they're just having a lot of fun and celebrations. And this they're is probably money the first... away, aren't they, from the briefcase? Yep. That's right. Um, there are bricks they... in the briefcase. Who's that lady um, that they're talking to? Natalie Cole. Cole. Natalie Cole. So this is a WrestleMania that doesn't really have any celebrities except I would say probably her. Yeah. Uh, it's the first year that, where they've not pushed that very hard at yeah. all. Um, it's not something that's high on the agenda this year. Now, maybe they just couldn't afford anybody. I don't know. Possibly. Um, or any celebrities that were in Vegas were at the crab table. Or, <laughs> yeah. Or, yeah. Or, or in one of those like high class fancy hotel rooms, but he's oh, yeah. lines, snorting lines <laughs> in drugs and yeah. waiting for some, some of the wrestlers to get off the card and join them later i don't know um <laughs> i don't know but uh yeah a lot of fun very boisterous that match and i really enjoyed it i thought it was great you're right it was pushed probably as hard as the main event was yes and um if not more, yeah, it's all, so. it's all about halfway through the show isn't it yeah, yeah. um so really fond memories of that I, mean, I enjoyed it a lot fair play and then we, we, we move on to the lex luger mr perfect match which yes. uh, I thought this was a this one stuck with me actually, but probably really? not for the reasons you were going to expect me to say. Okay. This one really stuck for me. Um, so I, I didn't know until relatively quite recently that um, Luger basically froze in this match and he just forgot everything that he'd mapped out yes. with Henning before the match and Henning just basically winged it. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I don't remember the match being particularly bad um yeah. it, it i guess it probably didn't achieve the heights that you know maybe it should have done or could have done no um, it's quite impressive when you look back on that now knowing that um it, they've they've planned the match it's wrestlemania it's the, probably the biggest payout of their financial year and yeah. shit one of the two has just forgotten all their lines yeah <laughs> and now um, yeah and you've got to improvise. So, you know, kudos to um, Kurt Henning, really, yeah, for I mean, um, carrying that match. And, you know, it wasn't too bad a match, really. But, um, again, it, it it did stick with me, this match. Um, I don't know. I want to sort of get on to the finish and what happened after the match more. But yeah, um, I, I, don't, I don't find the match particularly memorable other than the finish and some of the stuff that went on afterwards. But... Um, I don't know, is there anything you want to talk about as far as I mean, the actual match goes? I mean, again, at the time, I'm, I wasn't a really big Lex Luger fan. Um, I thought the bit at the beginning where he was posing with the women in the mirrors, that was quite good. Um, I was a big Mr. Perfect fan. I was hoping he would win, but obviously he didn't. Um, I mean, again, at the end, the ending is quite good. And then obviously the bit of the, the, the backstage as well, that happens as well. So. Um, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't the best match, but I mean, again, looking at it now, like this was Luger's first WWF pay per view. I know he was at the Royal Rumble '93, but it was just being introduced by Bobby Heenan. But this was his first match, so you can kind of understand why he forgot the match. But you know, it, it's it's helpful to have someone like Kurt Henning who's been there, done well, that. Are you saying you think 
maybe it was um, stage fright or big match. I would nerve. have thought so. Yeah, yeah, I would have thought so. I don't but, know. I've not heard. I've not really heard um, Lex Luger talk about this since then. Um, no. Very much, anyway. Other than sort of that happened, but not much more depth than that. But um, you mentioned about yeah, he, he was the narcissist character, and he had the mirrors in the ring, and I think yeah. that I think that grew um, tiresome very quickly. Yes. Um, yeah. I'm glad they was, changed his gimmick. It had to change, didn't it? Even, even if he wasn't going to be the next Hulk Hogan big thing. Yeah. Um, that gimmick had to go because it was just too much. It was it was genuinely a bit too much, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so, the end of the match, I remember more. Yeah. Um, but, um, I mean, I, I would I would say, again, another disappointing finish uh, in terms of a fresh face fan. Yeah. Uh, not the sort of finish that you want. Yeah, again, yeah, Lex Luger. Um, yeah, that whole narcissist thing. Um, <clears throat> I think probably the worst example of the narcissist gimmick is actually this introduction at WrestleMania 9 because um, you know, seeing all those like, scantily clad women in, in the ring is yeah. when I look back on that, you didn't see that very much no. at no. all. So it did actually stand out um, it did. It did. quite yeah, a bit. Yeah. And yeah, you know, the the cameramen are pretty shameless as well, aren't they? And literally, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you literally you saw every cheek walking up the ring. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> it's pretty infamous when you look back on it. Yeah, um, yeah not a good look. It, it was a yeah a gimmick that needed to be killed off. So anyway, it's a a, a bullshit schmars finish. Yeah, um, perfect. Perfect got knocked out by the the forearm, the the metal plate that was in Luger's forearm, didn't he? So. And then yeah, he looked and, really pissed off at the, when he woke up and ran after well, the Luger. Well, that's and... right. That, that's dead right. And, and actually, as as a a newcomer, um, what I would say is what I remember the most is, um, again, the believability of it. And you know, I genuinely believe that Mr. Perfect was really, really fucked off. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, it was very personal. He's very angry. I mean, you mentioned about being knocked out by the... Um, by the um, the metal plate in Lex Luger's uh, forearm, which was an unfortunate, genuine injury and yeah. reconstructive surgery within the previous year after a motorcycle accident. Um, but they decided to turn, you know, a misfortune into a virtue and say, okay, well, now he's the bionic man. He's going to be knocking people out <laughs> yeah. with the stick. You know, it was, why wouldn't you, I suppose? Um, sure. And but um yeah what it was a bit of a what a strange yeah a strange really strange gimmick and it for me it, it, it didn't work in a big way i mean it, as heels go I, I don't think he quite had the kind of heat that you want a heel to have i think it was a, no. a case of a lot of people just thought he was obviously just a complete freak yeah <laughs> an, an arsehole yeah. and a freak obviously dangerous yeah. Yeah. um he knocked out at the press conference which was not seen on the broadcast but mentioned in commentary knocked out wwf champion oh, in, yeah. um, like a, if it wasn't a press conference it was like uh, earlier in the day yeah um, he does a, he does it was like it a, was a press conference it was it? yeah yeah um, yeah he'd finished talking i think he was talking to like ray rougeau or something like that when it happened, yeah, or something stupid like That's that. That's right. Yeah. Again, that that was a strange thing to do, um, yeah. because um, it never went anywhere. No, no. When you look, look back on it now, um, if so, if Pritchard was on here, he'd probably say, "Oh no, there was a grand plan. We, we were going to do it." So that <laughs> yeah. in the European tour, um, yeah. with Hogan, Hogan was going to do his thing as champion, and then yeah. we're going to have we we're going to have fucking Brett and Luger. Um, in grudge yeah. matches um, for the whole of the Euro- European tour. That's why we did it, pal. <laughs> you know, that's probably what he'd say. <laughs> yeah, wow. We'll move on to another interesting match that was The Undertaker. Uh, sorry, and... sorry just, well, oh. just, just before we do that, um, what's I, I didn't quite mention what really stuck it out for me. Oh, right, was, okay. Um, it wasn't just the fact that Henning was pissed. Um, yeah. So, yeah, you mentioned it. They go backstage the camera actually follows him which is yeah. in itself is quite odd um yeah from my point of view it's not the 
presentation I was expecting. Yeah. Um, so they're, they're going backstage. So again, I'm thinking, shit, this is real. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. and, um, he finds Shawn Michaels and Luger um, talking. bragging and talking. Yeah. And he attacks them and it gets out of hand in, in, in the end. Um, yeah. Uh, comes out on the losing end and there's like um it's like poles and sticks and <laughs> junk um sort of used as weapons and and it came across actually really quite nasty and like a genuine brawl and i did actually buy into it as a yeah. fan um it came across quite believable and that's that's the one thing about the match that does actually stick in my mind but anyway <laughs> Yeah, I think they were setting up perfect in Shawn Michaels for SummerSlam 93. Oh, no, it, must have, it would have been for the European Tour. Oh, okay, sorry, yeah. <laughs> for the European Tour. Fucking bullshit European Tour. Ugh, that's... And yeah. We'll move we'll on to... That. We'll, move, we'll, we'll, we'll move, on. <laughs> move on to the Undertaker and Giant Gonzalez, who I remember seeing as Ali Gonte in WC Derby. Um I just I, I remember when he came out of the Royal Rumble, I was like, oh my god, what the hell is our Ali Gonte doing in the WWF? But yep. um yeah, this match is um yeah. <laughs> I I've heard the podcast of Bruce saying Undertaker was like, Thanks for the Giant Gonzalez shit match, or you know, <laughs> thanks for that. Well, twice. It wasn't just yeah. WrestleMania. <laughs> SummerSlam as well, yeah. Twice. <laughs> yes. Oh like said, man. Yeah. He had a lot to put up with. Um, John Gonzalez was a very imposing guy. Um, I wasn't a big fan of the the bodysuit they put him in. <laughs> but it, it was well, it, it was, it was weird. weird. Yeah, uh, the Undertaker that, that reeks of Vince McMahon to me. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? He was he was seduced by anyone that was fucking big and bad yeah. and had a great look. He was bowled over by people like that. So yeah. to me, that I mean, reeks of Vince. I mean, what can you say about this match? I mean, the only kind of thing that sticks out to me was like they used like um, chloroform, you know, chloroform, <laughs> who then gets stretched out and then the gong comes out and he comes back from that and chases off the well, Giant Gonzalez. Cool. Yeah, that, that was, was quite... the only that that he is was... the only part of the match I remember. Well, to be honest, that's exactly my memory as well, and I, I don't think we should continue. No, no. I mean, I, <laughs> the Undertaker has had far more successful WrestleMania matches than this is. I mean, the, the WrestleMania 8 match with Jake Roberts wasn't terrible, but it wasn't the best, but it was a lot better than this one. Hey, <laughs> so. I'll tell you one thing. Maybe this is one match too far. Um, yeah. And yeah. We're going into this sort of play-by-play now, but I think one of the things I mentioned earlier was that um, yeah, the, the Backlund Razor match was not becoming WrestleMania. Yeah. And it wasn't good enough. And I think there's too many examples on this pay per view of unresolved storylines. Yeah. And go to WrestleMania, you want payoffs. Oh, for yeah. The yeah. Most, for the most part, yeah. You want payoffs. And we didn't get many that day. Um, and that's pretty unforgivable. And I think it's why it's trashed as badly as it is. And it is deservedly so. I'm saying some relatively nice things about this show because it was my first proper watch of the pay-per-view and yeah. there was a lot of fun um at, at the if you like the carny aspect to it and the yeah, show yeah, yeah. Bit. yeah there was a lot of um innocent fun to it for me yeah. um but looking back on it years later with a more critical um take you know i, I think there's there's too many um sort of un- unforgivable um creative mistakes yeah. In this show, yeah, you know, this is another one. Um, no one wanted to see a, a, a mess like no. Undertaker, Giant Gonzalez, unresolved crap, you know, and it just dragged on. And it, you know, it was not much better at SummerSlam. No, um, not good enough. Not good enough. No, and then we move on to the. I mean, again, the Yokozuna Brahart World Championship match. Yokozuna had won the Royal Rumble in 93. Bret Hart was still the champion. Yeah. He beat Razor Steam Ramon. Rolled. Steam yeah. rolled that one. Um, he did. He was wrecking everybody that he faced, wasn't he? Yeah, I mean, Yokozuna was a big, opponent. big man, but had a great skill set, great move set, um, was believable. Um, I don't know. 
I thought I believed that the hitman could beat Yoko. Um, I mean, the way he, the way Yoko won it was a bit uh, was a bit blah. But I mean, again, the, the end of the match with Hogan's there and all that schmoz. One thing at a time. One thing yeah. at a time. It's a bit to unpack here. Yeah, um, we're near, we're not far from the end, are we? Really? No. no. Um, oh wow. Um, so before the actual match, there's again a little bit of build up. Um, I'm seeing the contract signing incident where basically Yoko um, you know, gets in a cheap shot yeah. and Bonsai drops Brett and he, Brett scrapes himself up um, to not lose complete face. Yeah. Um, he is down. Okay, he is this, down. This, this is another one that I remember. Um, I can remember at this point I'm starting to ask more questions of my yeah. brother about this and that. And I, I can remember asking him about this guy Bret Hart yeah. and uh, basically I think brother was telling me oh yeah you know he's really good but I yeah. don't think he's going to win this um, yeah. and that was the general feeling I had at the time was that uh, yeah. wow this guy this guy's massive yeah um, you, I mean if you stand them next to each other you just think well, no way no absolutely no way I mean even Hogan Andre um yeah. It's a similar comparison, but at least Hogan was a pretty Muscle. big guy himself. Big guy, yeah. <laughs> um, albeit not the giant, but he was still, you know what I mean? He still had something. He must have had at least one chance in a million. Yeah. Um, against yeah. Andre. And this one was just like, oh, no way. Um, so if you put in two wrestlers like that, that are so horribly mismatched, and you're not going to put the little guy over, yeah. then you've got to be asking questions about, well, where does he go from here? Yeah. Uh, he is the champion. He's been given the belt. Um, he could have gone over. He could have won if yeah. they wanted him to. And ultimately, um, no matter what anyone says, Vince McMahon himself didn't mm-hmm. want to put over the WrestleMania 9. Yeah. Um, which went against his previous thinking of, well, I want a face champion to go over big at WrestleMania. That's just what we do. Yeah. Um, so this is a departure from that. Um, now, for whatever reason, whether it's ticket sales or perceived lack of success, yeah. um, in following Hulk Hogan, um, Vince McMahon ultimately never pushed the, the, you know, the go button on Brett being the, the new big thing no. and at that time especially and that's just the way it was so in terms of what was said and what was promised behind the scenes with hogan and brett and how that was all supposed to pan out um you know it's it's hotly discussed and debated even now um but the you know the long and short of it is that you know hogan coming back um you know it was supposed to be for the tag titles and it was never going to be a main event picture for hulk um, and it was never billed that way, and therefore the pay per view wasn't promoted that way. And you know, um, the fact that Hogan eventually ended up going in there after the match is over, yeah, uh, beating Yoko in a few seconds <laughs> yes. um, is bad promotion, yeah, if nothing else. If that's what Vince wanted to ultimately do, um, sometimes I, f- I feel like it's just saying to Vince, like, why were you such a complete pussy about trying to <laughs> protect certain talent when you were definitely not going to put them over anyway? Like, yeah. if you wanted Brett out of the picture, why don't you just let him get beat yeah. by Hogan? Um, or, yeah. or let Hogan win the title at, at King of the Ring? Yeah. Um, why do this shit? It didn't make like, any oh, well, sense. He, never, he might want to go back to Brett, and obviously he did. Um, yeah time and time again but um it's it's a strange period of indecision and woolly thinking for me in terms of some of the the top level um matches that were going on around this era because yeah some of them don't really make that much sense and no. you, you get the impression that there's a lot of reluctance and um you know, unwillingness to commit to anybody fully and get behind anyone um, yeah. Because even Hogan, the golden child, who's come back, you know, the the, the um, 
yeah, the former champion that's that's now back. Ultimately, they don't push the button on him either. No, you know, he comes back and he, he wins the belt. He doesn't defend it until he loses it in June. Yeah, he doesn't defend it, and that, yeah, the, and it's it's pretty infamous and comical now. But uh, you know, when when asked about it, you know, Bruce Pritch is talking about, oh, well, the whole reason for yeah. putting the belt on on Hulk Hogan was so that he would defend it on his farewell European tour. And um, basically, he didn't. He didn't. Yeah, Con- <laughs> Conrad's like, but he lost the match. How can he defend it? <laughs> yeah, King of the Ring, the goal yeah. score after, and he's not the champion. It's just like, yeah. And he more or less just kind of says, like, oh, well, that's what I was told. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And that was yeah, pretty epic. <laughs> pretty epic, yeah. that whole story. Um, and to me, it seems like such a shame when I look back on it because it was a shitty way to end the show. Although I have to say, at the it time, was. at the time again, I knew who Hulk Hogan was. I had loads yeah. of fun in the tag match. Um, you know, Yokozuna, and he still has to cheat. It's a, give credit to Bret Hart for putting him in the sharpshooter, by the way. That was oh, yeah, yeah. a great spot. Yeah. And yeah, he could have won that match and he could have been put over. Yeah. Um, and it wouldn't have been a bad thing if you ask me, but. No. Um, anyway, it didn't happen, and Hogan eventually comes in there and he wins the, the title. Yeah, and I thought it was brilliant at the time. <laughs> yeah. It was absolutely brilliant. I loved it. I just thought, wow. And even my brothers, they're more confused at this point because again, yeah. they're more about this. He's like, wow. That, that, he's, I can remember him saying, like, oh, now he's a five-time champion now. And, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I thought it was brilliant. It was epic. It was yeah. epic. Great way. It was just because it was, it was spontaneous and it was a great, a great surprise. And you know, you loved Hulk Hogan winning the title at the time. Yeah. And, yeah. and I come into it very green and fresh and not knowing terribly much about it. But I, I thought it was great at the time. Um, but ultimately, it wasn't enough to get me watching it every week. Um, I can remember having enough of an interest to occasionally ask my brother. What's going on now? With yeah, Hogan is he still the champion? And he'd give me sort of updates. I, I might have seen little tidbits, but he wasn't defending the belt until King of the Ring. So there wasn't really much for me to follow up on anyway. And that's another criticism: is that who knows? Maybe I would have done. Maybe yeah. I would have got into it if they'd followed up properly on all that stuff. But not to be. And um, I vaguely remember being told about what happened at King of the Ring that he'd lost it. I can remember feeling disappointed. Yeah. I thought, oh, that's a shame. Yeah. Um, and that was basically it. It just didn't, it just fizzed out into nothing for me. So actually yeah. that whole storyline um, was my false start in wrestling because it, it, it almost got me into it, but not quite. I, I would say because of the, of the way it was handled. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I got into it a year later at WrestleMania 10. Um, yeah. And, and that ultimately, I'd say it was the strength of the finish on WrestleMania 10 that got me into it, and there was something to follow up on. Um, but yeah, this is this is a strange one, and it's it's definitely called out, rightly so, for bullshit. It, yeah. it didn't do. I don't think it did anybody any good. No. Um, can anyone come out of it and say, well, they're a better man for it, or they're a better wrestler for it? I don't think so. Um, <laughs> no, Hogan. No, no. Hogan comes out of it as champion, but he doesn't defend it. Is if anything, he sort of, you know, he came across as the um, the guy that just snuck in and nicked it um, and left, yeah, without necessarily earning it. Yeah, it has to. I mean, he did really. I mean, big problem for a lot of people um, looking back on it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was gone for over a year, and you know, he just comes back, has a match that he doesn't even win the match. Doesn't even win the match and then come home and second he's the champion. It's like, how's that work? <laughs> no, then, I mean, he actually he does have a really good match, possibly Yokozuna's best ever match, actually, when he wins the title from Hogan. Yeah. I can't think of a better match that he ever had himself. Um, oh, that's a great match. Wow. Yeah, I mean, they, they did book Yoko strong as a heel champion when he did win the title back from him. So, yeah, unstoppable. Yeah, up until yeah. WrestleMania 10. But I mean, yeah, I'll have to agree actually. Yeah, Yoko's best match, Hogan, yeah, King of the Ring ninety three. Um I can't I can't think of anyone that was better. I mean the Undertaker's feud was good. Um 
Lex Luger, mm, wouldn't say it was a great match, but I mean, I don't, when he was body slammed up, you know, people were losing their minds with that. But I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would say Hogan Yoko was probably his best match. But yeah, this 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 WrestleMania is up there at WrestleMania 9. It's slightly better than WrestleMania 11. Um, I mean, the Steiner Brothers and... Um, Steiner Brothers and the Head Shrinkers was probably the best match on the card. Um, Money Inc. and Mega Maniacs was pretty pretty decent in terms of like there was a lot of comedy in the match, a lot of schmoz, but obviously the way it ended as well, it's like ah, oh, too much oh, unresolved shit. Yeah, yeah too me. many, too many weird finishes and too many unresolved. You want to go away matches. happy. Yes, yeah. generally speaking, it won't all go your way, but you want to go away feeling generally quite pleased yeah. about the way things turned out. And it's which is not to say it's got to be predictable and all the all the you know the faces have to win and the heels have to lose. It's not I'm not saying that, yeah. um, but you can't have so many storylines unresolved like they were at WrestleMania night. It just does not work. It's not the way to do it. Yeah. Um, and in spite of the novelty of having it in las vegas and an interesting set dressed um parking lot for one of the better um, yeah yeah it, it just failed to deliver enough really um king of the ring by a country mile is the best pay-per-view from 1993 and yeah and in no small part to obviously the tournament itself and the way sort of brett handled himself in that and yeah you know, Yoko winning the belt, that, that's a much better pay-per-view. Oh, yeah. 100% on that, yeah. Um, yeah, so, some of the Slum and Survivor series were great. So, yeah, I would definitely say King of the Ring. But, um, yeah, WrestleMania 9, not one of the best shows that they've done, probably in the bottom two ever WrestleMania's ever produced. Um, if it hadn't been my first show, yeah, I'd be way harder on this than I have been. Well, that's fair enough. I mean, no, every time I watch WrestleMania 9, I kind of cringe and think, oh, it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's below average. It's not even, it's not even one of the best. It's just, oh. Um, but I'm glad we covered it. So um, I don't know if you've got anything else to say about WrestleMania 9 or not. No, I think there's, there's enough said, really. Let's face it. Excellent. Well, I mean, the next the next episode we'll be doing we'll be doing we'll be doing a WCW pay per view of Capital Combat 1990, the return of RoboCop, which <laughs> which which probably was both of our like first WCW VHS videos we got from Woolworths. I know it was mine anyway. Yep. So, um, uh, yep. Yep. Uh, you lent it to me. Yes. And I think I managed to get myself a copy of it from, of all places, a, a newsagent. Wow. In the UK. <laughs> it had a, a very, very small collection of videos. Somehow yes. they had a WCW one in there. Um, which is, a, to be honest, is its rightful sort of placement, really. It's where you'd want to pick up a video like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, to be nah, that's a, it's a, it was a fun video. We'll have, we'll have a lot of fun with that. I'm looking forward to it, actually. Oh, um, yeah. Just so we can get a bit of variety out there, change gears and talk about some NWA, WCW uh, stuff. And there's some great matches on that card as well. So uh, that, that'll be a lot of fun. Look forward to that. Excellent. Yeah. Wow. We, we shall end it there and we'll, say, we'll see you on the next episode, guys. Take care. See you soon.